Thank you very much. Cardio oncology service and teamwork. At the end of the lecture, we will learn a new definition of what this team stands for. Let me begin from real case. Talk about female patient, 75 year old, with occult colorectal carcinoma and ischemic heart disease. Depending on who she sees first, if it's oncologist, oncologist defects fecal blood, colonoscopy reveals tumor, she goes for surgery, getting adjunctive therapy by Folfox and Bevacizumab, 5-FU induced cardiotoxicity, thrombosis, hypertension, progressive heart failure, cardiac insufficiency. If she goes to cardiologist at first, cardiologist probably will find ischemic heart disease, medical therapy and cardiac monitoring will be implemented with GI tract bleeding due to aspirin treatment, colon cancer detected, unmasked actually, but with liver metastasis, chemotherapy with heart monitoring, metastatic disease. So not so happy. In the case of cardiology, cardio-oncology service, probably we would be able to, by collaboration, to prevent metastasis and to prevent heart failure too. It's our goal, actually. Some of urban myths and reality. For cancer patients, cardiovascular outcomes do not matter as much. It's an oncologist view. Pretty experienced, 63 year old. On the other hand, when I got the news that I had heart failure, I was devastated having just survived breast cancer. 51 year old female breast cancer survivor. Cardiovascular surveillance in cancer survivors, not sure this is cost effective and who is going to pay for this anyway? 67 year old hematologist asks. I had no idea that cardiovascular disease could be or could have such a profound long term impact tells us 45 year old Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor. So there is communication breakdown. Oncologists and cardiologists frequently do not understand each other goals. Age adjusted death rates uh, in the United States and all over the world uh, for heart disease are going down and for malignant neoplasm you see some stabilization. There is no decrease, no real decrease. On the other hand, we have relatively, uh, not relatively, but exciting increase in five-year relative survival rates. Actually, for all sites of cancer, you see them from 70s, about 50% survival for five years, it improved for the last uh, 10 years to 68% in all sites of cancer. Exciting advancement in breast cancer, 90% five-year survival from colon, 66. For leukemia, 54%. Even for deadly lung and bronchial cancer, there is some advancement. And I think right now, today, it's the data from 2005. I think today it's much more. Uh, my colleagues from uh, lung service will agree. Melanoma is improving too. Melanoma uh, survival rate. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma, it's a uh, great uh, advance in this disease too. And prostate cancer, 100% five-year survival. It's amazing. And because of this, cancer is becoming a chronic disease. And recent studies show that cardiovascular disease competes with breast cancer as the leading cause of death for all the females diagnosed with breast cancer. It was published in 2011. Another paper uh, from uh, childhood cancer survivor study, it shows that after second malignancy, the leading cause of the mortality is cardiac disease. You see it here. And uh, malignancies and cardiovascular diseases are accounted for the largest number of deaths. You see hazard ratios here. Even patients with metastatic prostate cancer, uh, cardiovascular mortality in uh, uh, androgen deprivation therapy, 
Cardiovascular mortality represents a common event in patients with metastatic prostate cancer, and in this case, we have to treat cardiovascular risk factors to improve the survival of the patients. So there is an unmet need of early detection and prevention of existing and or newly emerging cardiovascular disease. With this in mind, the Cardio Oncology Service was founded in May 2013 in Rabin Medical Center. This is our hospital. You see in close vicinity this is Davidov Cancer Comprehensive Center, the largest comprehensive cancer center in Israel, with very active and largest cardiology department in Israel, and people who want to help the really gravely ill patients. We choose, it's the policy of this hospital, patient-centered approach. Cancer patient is leaded uh, treatment case manager, is medical oncologist. But there is consulting services of cardio oncology, neuro oncology, etc., and you have nurses and dietitian and laboratory services, dedicated hospital beds, physiotherapists, medical imaging, radio oncology services, surgical teams, survivorship clinic. So everything in one place. It's actually one stop place for cancer patient. Cardio oncology service includes outpatient clinic and inpatient 24-7 consulting service. At the beginning, referral criteria were patients with decreased ejection fraction and in need of cancer therapy. Cancer patients were planned for potentially cardiotoxic agents and an increased risk of cardiotoxicity is perceived by the medical oncologist. Hemato-oncologic patients with cardiac involvement, amyloidosis, malignant infiltrative diseases of the heart and others. Candidates for bone marrow transplantation and preceding cardiac problems. Childhood cancer survivors more than 10 years after chemotherapy and chest radiotherapy. Patients with cardiac tumors. Cancer patients with heart rhythm problems. Patients with malignancies and pericardial effusion. And every other things you can imagine where cancer and heart problems are me meet together. You see other strategies for cardiac testing in our clinic. We begin from careful analysis of oncologic treatment and of the patient, physical examination, including detailed blood pressure, heart rate, weight, and BMI, ECG with thorough monitoring of QT interval. V scan, it's a useful extension to physical examination. It's a small ultrasound uh, equipment that helps us actually to point of care to evaluate immediately the patient. And uh, actually, Dr. Koval calls it stethophone. It's stethoscope, actually, versus stethophone, what we used to say, stethoscope. So Six-minute walk test for heart failure patients, ischemia testing, 2D echocardiography serial with increasing implementation of speckle tracking. Troponin BNP testing for ongoing chemotherapy patients. Cardiac MRI for cardiac amyloidosis or unclear cases of cardiac toxicity to reveal different kinetics of late gadolinium enhancement. Blood lipids, glucose, kidney functions, complete blood count, etc., and nurse lead follow up clinic for cardiac drug titration and patient education. Numbers. Our outpatient clinic running for the past 19 months, four days a month, actually one day a week, I do it. We follow right now 300 patients. There are about 20 new patients a month on average. A total of 900 visits. Here you see the pie of the tumors we are dealing with. And you see that the great deal of lymphoma patients and breast cancer patients and genitourinary tumors and GIT, we have 9% of our patients have cardiac amyloidosis. There are heart tumors, multiple myeloma patients, and other cases, other cancers too. We use published guidelines when I began to be involved in this field 
we thoroughly scan the literature to see some kind of guidelines to be able to treat the patient according to the guidelines. And uh, as you heard previously from previous speaker from Giuseppe Curuliano, there are no actually uh, evidence-based hard guidelines for treating. And what you see here, Giuseppe headed the team of the physicians that issued this ESMO clinical practice guidelines in 2012 about follow-up of uh, anthracycline treated breast cancer patients. For example, you see that they recommend to evaluate troponin I at each cycle. If troponin I is positive, according to the wonderful paper from Daniela Cardinale from his institute from Milano, they advocate to begin an alapril treatment for one year, AC inhibitors, and uh, to follow by echo three, six, and nine months, echo at 12 months, and every six months for five years for single positive troponin. If troponin is negative, they advocate to do echo only after one month and echo every year. If the troponin was not evaluated during chemotherapy, they advocate to do echo at the end of chemotherapy. If you reveal no LV dysfunction, you have to follow by echo three, six, nine, and so on. And if you reveal left ventricular dysfunction, you have to begin the treatment with these inhibitors and beta blockers and clinically follow the patients. Actually, there are no randomized control trials on this pathway, but this makes sense, and uh, this is a routine cardiology, cardiologic practice to treat so-called B-stage heart failure with this kind of approach. On the other hand, there is explosion of biomarkers and images as predictors of cardiotoxicity. This is a paper of Sawaya from 2012 from Circulation Cardiovascular Imaging. They looked for uh, longitudinal strain, uh, less than minus 19% is pathological value, and ultrasensitive troponin I more than 30 is pathological value too, and the combination of these things gave sensitivity of 87%, specificity of 93%, and negative predictive value of 91%. So actually, combination of echo parameter, like longitudinal strain with cardiac troponin, gives some insight to pick up the high-risk patient. This is one of the echoes we did in our hospital. In this particular case, you see the patient with amyloidosis, cardiac amyloidosis, and you can see that basis of the heart is contracting less than the apex. In normal situation, it's opposite. So we incrementally use speckle tracking. Right now, we have about more than 200 examinations using this technology. Cardiac MRI, uh, with the beginning of cardio oncology clinic, we were happy that MRI program was launched in our hospital and we we're working very closely with cardiac MRI and use this wonderful technology for our patients too. So what does TEAM stand for from the beginning of the lecture? Together, everyone achieves more. And here is our team. Dr. Guchtain, our cardiologist, he works in radiology, and radiologist partner, Dr. Shafir, and here Motivaturi is doing our echocardiography examinations. Adas helps us in echo and uh, clinic too. These the nurses and uh, secretary, and everyone together we achieve, we achieve more. It's uh, effect and we want to thank everybody who is involved from the cardiology side, from the oncology side, from the hematology side in this wonderful endeavor and I think that we really are able to help the patient. Thank you.